Hi, this is Mike Furches with Real People, Real Life in Wichita, <laughs> Kansas, America. So uh, missing some of my other friends here today, Michelle, Mufasa, Robin, and others. So we need them here to keep uh, the excitement going. We've got another segment here to do, though, and I want to talk some about Wichita, some of the things that we have going for us, uh, and then take the conversation wherever it goes. Uh, Leaf, we talked about Wichita Big Screen earlier. And uh, I have friends from all across the country. I don't know how well, well you guys are aware of this, but I have friends from all over the country that think it is so cool that I can see a movie that I've loved for years like Night Riders sure. by George Romero on the big screen or Halloween or you know some of these other, the, the, the Godzilla film that, you, that we did a while back. Right, the original uh, so, the Japanese uh, and, and then we're blessed with the, the, the IMAX, the Warren IMAX here in town. When Tron came out, it was the top-grossing movie in America for that week. Sure, uh, little things like that that people don't know that we have a. We we need more movie making experiences in businesses, but we have a very large movie going audience that I think probably uh, there's not many places in the country that can compare with what we have going here. A lot of people are are stunned at the the quality of theaters we have here. What Bill Ward set up. I mean, Bill is a hardcore businessman. I have no doubt. But it stems from a passion for film. A lot of people don't know he started as an usher, I think, at Harry Street Mall when he was a kid. And uh, he's been in the film industry for many years, and he's seen you know, uh, innovation happening as well as uh, kind of luxury presentation happening around the country. And he just rolled the dice. First thing was with the palace. A lot of people have, a lot of towns have third-run houses. Usually a third-run movie house, which means the movie's been out for a long time, and now they're going to charge you a buck to see it. Usually it's a rundown theater, a little strip mall. I can, I can tell you a story about, I won't name the city that had one of those houses, and I'm telling you, more times than not, I had run-ins with gang members and thugs. Oh, yeah. It was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the Palace, they started off, uh, it actually had two THX certified screens, it's all brand new, lots of neon, it's beautiful, and that was a huge success. It was and so exciting then he, when they came into town. They yeah. Put that in town. Oh, yeah. And now, what I know people who have actually traveled from across the country to visit the new Warren theaters. You know, when the Warren East opened, uh, I don't know if George Lucas actually visited, but he gave them an official statement that the Warren East right now represents the absolute state of the art in film projection and theatrical presentation in the entire United States. The IMAX is, or at least it has been, the highest grossing IMAX screen in the country for at least a few years running. Mm -hmm. Not just not just in Kansas. Not just Kansas. The whole, mm -hmm. including L.A., New York, et cetera, et cetera. People in Wichita love movies, period. Mm -hmm. There is a love here for film that has been supporting, and, and there's been discussion that there's going to be new innovations out at the Warren East, possibly more screens, or an IMAX movie, but I, uh, and even because people love movies so much, they're reopening the North Rock. AMC's coming. Mm -hmm, exactly, in, yeah. AMC's yeah. never been in Kansas, or at least yeah. in Wichita. Not in Wichita. Not in Wichita. And they're going to open an AMC screen here. So there is this love for film. Um, but even with all that, you know, as a, as a real hardcore film by the guy who loved retro movies, lots of times I'd hear about the director's cut of Alien playing around the country, not in Wichita. The director's cut of Blade Runner, the final cut, was actually only a few prints, but it was so many people were showing up for it, it made like two million bucks on 20 screens, and I, that's when I started begging, please show these. Well, years later, we finally got both of those movies. And we had we showed Blade Runner here. We showed William Friedkin Sorcerer. And, and it had a special <laughs> guest to talk about the movie, yeah. about Scott. William Friedkin, <laughs> William Friedkin is the director of The Exorcist and The French Connection. He won an Academy Award for French Connection, and then Sorcerer was his love child, very expensive. Most people never saw it. It disappeared because it came out two weeks after Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Star Wars steamrolled over it and literally kicked it out of theaters as soon as its contract was up. Mm -hmm. And we and they did a 4K restoration of it. And I begged and kicked and finally said, I'll pay for it. And the Warren said, okay, all right, Lee, we'll do it, we'll do it. You know. And then I just lucked into it. We had William Friedkin himself, the filmmaker himself, do a live Skype Q&A for over 50 minutes, oh. taking questions from people in Wichita. Oh, that was really cool. cool. Yeah, really it's cool. online. You can find it under Wichita Big Screen, mm -hmm. William Friedkin, on, on YouTube. Uh, but we did, and, and there was a few technical glitches, but it was an amazing night. And that has just helped continue going. So now, you know, over the years, we've helped host screenings and festivals at the Warren Old Town. It's one of our favorite places. The Palace Theater, because they do the, we've helped work with the managers out there. I heard Santa Claus even showed up at one of the productions last year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Santa Claus came out to Black Christmas, if I recall. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, the, I'm very excited because we're about to do our first collaboration with the Orpheum Theater. And the Orpheum is this beautiful old uh, palace theater, like a literal palace, where it has a balcony, it has arches and murals. And uh, it's, I think it was opened in the 30s, and it's been slowly going under renovations and restoration. And uh, we are showing a, a brand new movie that has taken 13 years to complete uh, from a director named Patrick Reed Johnson. It's a film, um, uh, it's an autobiography about himself as a young filmmaker where he got to go visit the Industrial Light and Magic, the special effects houses for Star Wars, and then go meet Douglas Trumbull and his crew for Close Encounters before the movies ever came out. And he got to see lots of Star Wars years before, I mean, months, months before anybody. So he technically is the number one very first Star Wars fan. <laughs> and he did a little autobiography about himself as a young filmmaker doing Super 8 movies out in the middle of Ohio or wherever he lived and doing a, a Jaws 2, his own Jaws 2, long before there was a Jaws 2, and then getting to go and meet these filmmakers and experience it and then bringing it back to his small town saying, this movie's coming, Star Wars is coming, it's going to change everything. It's a, very, it's, a, it's a very warm, I think it's a family film from the one I've seen of it, but a very warm character study with a, uh, and it's a story about pursuing your dreams and not giving up on them, and uh, getting out of your small town, you know, and, and going to L.A. or doing what you need to give, to give it a try to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's very exciting. And we managed to get the Orpheum on board with it. They saw it and they got excited about it. So on May 25th, the 40th, and that's, that's the thing. The movie's called 52577. That is the famous release date of Star Wars, May 25th, 1977. So on the very, on May 25th this year, the 40th anniversary of the release of Star Wars, this movie that he started 13 years ago, because it was very low budget, and he's, had, he's actually, just last week I was talking to the director, and he was still, he was filming brand new special effects sequences for it. So he's getting down to the wire even 13 years later. But it's going to be a really cool movie. It's eight bucks at the Orpheum at seven o'clock. Doors open at six. If you like movies, like stories about movies, but also the star of it is um, John Daly. And John Francis Daly, he was the lead of a TV show called Freaks and Geeks. He played a character named Sam, and he was a kid in that. He was like 11 or 12, freshman in high school, maybe, so 13, 14. But he's a teenager in 52577. And for me, I love Freaks and Geeks. So not only is this a Star Wars love letter, a movie about filmmaking, a movie about dreams, it's also, to me, almost an unofficial finale or sequel or follow-up to Freaks and Geeks, because it's set in the 70s. It has John in the lead. So I'm very excited about this movie for several reasons, and I absolutely recommend, if you like movies, to come out and check it out. The Orpheum shows movies on a regular occasion. You can check them out. They have various movie nights throughout the month. Yeah, look and, on their website. Yeah, they, go to their website, orpheum.com, I think it is. And, you know, for folks that like to go to the movies that want the popcorn and the soft drink, it's all available there, uh, along as, uh, along as, uh, as well as some adult beverages. Yeah, they also occasionally they have wine and, and spirits, yeah, so. as well as sometimes they bring pizza out. You can get a slice of pizza. It's a good place to see a movie. They'll know uh, you guys uh, as well, both of you. Uh, tell us what's going on with, I mean, with you guys. Where are you at? What do you see happening in Wichita, whether that be theater, movies, commercials, or whatever? Blaine? Well, I, one thing I've always been impressed about Wichita is there's there are so many theaters here. I mean, there are a lot of opportunities for actors to practice their craft mm -hmm. in this town. Uh, and, and they're amazing. I've done I did professional theater when I lived in Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, the, the and I used to do three weeks a year in New York on going to Broadway stuff. The, the talent level here, whether it be at Kichai, which is one of my favorite little theaters, mm -hmm. or even the Wichita Children's Theater, uh, which I took my granddaughter to see her first production here about two weeks ago, there is some incredible talent. And mm -hmm. there, there is, there's a lot of good theater here in Wichita. Yeah, it really mm -hmm. is. There is, there is. Yeah. But, um, I'm sorry to step on your one. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of used to it. I teach, so <laughs> okay. I would have been a problem child. <laughs> and Dennis agreeing with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, there's a lot of places here. I mean, for actors to to really hone their craft mm -hmm. and 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 learn their craft and stuff like that, especially with theater. I mean, I teach an on camera acting class. Um, you know, I work it around my students' schedules, and I teach them not only the craft, but I teach them the business because that's the problem. Most of them learn the craft 
have no clue about the business. Yeah, so they go out to L.A. with no clue about the uh, business and wonder why they're getting rolled back it's a whole two months other, later. Because this animal, is like yeah. they, they were completely unprepared. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, – but there's this, – this is a great theater town. I'd like to see – I would like to see someplace like the Warren or, or whatever at least once a month allow uh, for independent filmmakers here in Kansas, in Wichita and stuff like that, to show their films, whether it be a succession of shorts, whether it be a feature, whether it be something like that, because – Right now, most of them, the only time they ever get to see their stuff on the big screen is at the festivals. Is at the festivals. At the festivals. Mm -hmm. And it would be really kind of nice to be able to, to say, hey, you know, this month my, my short or my, my film is going to be playing at, uh, at one of the Warren theaters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I totally, so. I totally agree. I, there's that dead space about 30 minutes before a movie starts. And for about 10 to 15 of that, we have the commercials and the, the trailers and so forth. Mm -hmm. But there's easy, they could easily, 30 minutes prior to feature film, throw in a local short or something of that nature. Didn't they used to do that back in the they day? They did at one time, yeah. I wish they were still doing it. I know that I, see, I saw them do that several times at the Old Town, but mm -hmm. it's, it's been a while since I've seen it done. I've actually offered yeah. a few times. With Night Rider, I, I offered a local filmmaker. He was, I knew he was finishing a short film. I said, well, we could do a... A little premiere at the, on the big screen if you want, but the film wasn't ready. I've offered like three different occasions, guys who have movies, and it just wasn't quite ready. But that is a possibility. The more, mm -hmm. the more the audiences see. The problem is, it's it's a it's a small town, technically a small big town. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to get the word out. I meet guys who are so passionate about horror movies, they identify. I am a horror movie fan. That's like how people know them. Oh, he's a horror movie fan. Mm -hmm. And every month, I meet somebody who has no idea we've been doing a horror festival. Every October for the last six Octobers, you know we well, have some seven great, great films coming up, and that, that show in that as well. Yeah, great films. So it's hard to get the word out, but once the but it's getting it's happening with Wichita Big Screen. It's a it's a group on Facebook right now. We haven't started a website yet, but we have over two thousand members, and that's what I did to try to. It doesn't just promote the stuff that I set up. Any movie that's a unique screening, even if it's just a movie that's showing at the Donut Hole. If people let me know about it, we promote it. So hopefully people can learn, get in the habit of going to Wichita Big Screen once a week and seeing what we're talking about. Well, you, I took my granddaughter to see the ghost of Mr. Chicken because she knew I loved that Augusta. movie. And it was showing in Augusta, so I got to go take her. Guys, how can we, how can we reach you? Well, if folks want to, if they're interested in you as an actor or a spokesperson or something, how can they reach you? And Well, I mean, they can reach me by my website, which is www I am Delno -E .com. Of course, I'm Spell on. that, Delno. <laughs> the EB part. <laughs> D-E-L-N-O-E-B-I-E. -E. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm uh, on Instagram as a Delno EB official. Um, so, you know, I try to be on all the social, social media system. platforms. Yeah, so with, with, with me, it's social media, Facebook, Again, so, media, Instagram. So spell your name if you want. Yeah, D-U-A-N-E. Uh, B R I S T O W. Yeah, yours is the easy one. Ha -ha. Yeah. Leif? Well, find me at Wichita Big Screen. That's, you know, I'm the only guy who posts on there, the initial post. So all you got to do is find Wichita Big Screen on Facebook and click on Leif Yonker and then I'll take you to me and, and uh, send me a I know message. Gary's been a big help. I, I wanted Gary to be here and he had to work Gary Miller, who was yeah. the first special effects guy. Yeah. Big old guy. Makes, you know, I like standing next to Leif and Gary because I look smaller. You feel petite. <laughs> <laughs> My sister says that she, she likes to know this because she feels tiny. Hey, you know, for folks in Wichita, we we are tremendously blessed with incredible talent, and uh, I truly am honored to call each of these guys friends. Uh, knowing, getting to know Dwayne Moore, but certainly knowing Delno and Lee for some time, and uh, you know, sometimes you might be someone that's hosting a television program, but I really am the one that's blessed to call these to call these guys friends, and. Uh, I've been there for special occasions, mm -hmm. I think, for yes, both you of you, off and on in, in your lives and my life. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I truly will say that Wichita, not just I'm blessed, but Wichita's blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, I, I literally have friends all across the country. I Man, I wish we had something like Wichita Big Screen where y'all were doing that here. You know, we live in Pensacola or we live in, you know, Greenville, South Carolina. We don't have nothing like that. So move to Wichita. <laughs> uh, but, we, mm -hmm. you know, we would love to see more movie companies come in and more mm -hmm. things take place. Mm -hmm. And uh, this town deserves it. But America deserves it, too. I want to thank you for watching Real People, Real Life here in Wichita, Kansas, America. Uh, we'll be back next week. And until then, uh, keep in touch with us. Check us out on Facebook, the videos, and so forth. Have a great day. God bless. See you next week. Thanks for having us, Mike. Yeah, more than welcome. Thank you, Mike. Nice. More Thanks. than welcome.